Welcome back, GG crew, to Pokemon Violet Part 15. Let's get going. One, I think I saw a Ghastly. It is a Ghastly. Do we have a Ghastly? I don't remember. I don't remember much after this point. <laughs> It'll be okay. We'll just watch as the graphics load and everything moves on. And whatever that is. Or whatever that is. And we made it. Oh gosh. I think during my playthrough, that's how uh, I like got lost. I was just jumping off of random cliffs, thinking it'd be okay. But I'm gonna trust you know where you're going, GG. I'm gonna trust a lot. And we killed, we killed the skiddo. What is that? Why is it glowing? Why is it glowing? Apparently we just don't care. Well, how is everybody? I'm okay. You're okay. Psyduck, he looked okay. Uh, what's new? It's 2024. It's weird to think how long the pause was for this franchise. Or, I should say for our coverage on this franchise, but slowly but surely, we'll finish things at our pace. Uh, cause what, this game... When did this game come out? How like, how, how far behind am I now? Um, it's been long enough that I still don't know if there's another Pokemon game coming out. It might have just been a year. It's probably been a year. So if you listen to episode 14, and now you're listening to this episode, first of all, thanks for coming back. Second of all, it's been a year. <laughs> oh no, you got lost like I did. Yeah, the, <laughs> the map is surprisingly difficult to navigate. Because there's so many just block pathways and ledges that are semi-clear when you're looking at the map. But, yeah, just the, the paths aren't great. But it's what we got. And you know what? This has been a fun game for the most part. It's... It definitely feels like it's a lot more fleshed out and like on track um, versus like Arceus, which we just finished our playthrough of Pokemon Arceus. So please, if you haven't seen that, but you love Pokemon, go check that out. Um, <laughs> Arceus was such a like almost demo of what this game was going to be. Um, that it's actually nice and refreshing to come back to the series after finishing our Pokemon Arceus series and just kind of remembering all the things I'm already in love with. Granted, I personally never finished playing a Pokemon game. <laughs> Which, uh... Yes, go ahead and hit me all you want in the comments about that. I just, at some point, I get burnt out and I don't go back to them. This game included, on my own personal playthrough, I have not finished uh, the good old G Gamer, GG here, uh, has been trucking through these games. I think that's that was my only complaint about this game versus Arceus was uh, the Nintendo Switch seemed to be having a slight issue running this game and I don't know if they ever really patched all the weird funky <laughs> glitching of things just calling in at the last moment 
but even just by the map. I mean, there's so much more to do in this game, and uh, there's just alternative routes and ways to play, which feels nice and more open um, than the last one was. I mean, don't get me wrong, wrong there's still a very linear playthrough, but... Even just with this game versus my own playthrough, I like skipped the first gym boss um, and started with the second and didn't really have much of an issue. So clearly it's less of a, a mistake of the developers and more of, yeah, go for it, do what you want. Fight who you want to fight. Catch everything. Catch nothing. I guess you can't catch nothing. You need at least three Pokemon to maybe beat this game? I'm actually curious. Has anyone... I know there's people who do uh, very intense playthroughs of uh, Pokemon. Um, oh, what's the... It's called, like, a Nuzlocke. Boom. A Nuzlocke, um, which I think I've mentioned in a previous one of these videos that this would be a very interesting and a very different Pokemon game to try to um, do a Nuzlocke on. For those of you who don't know what a Pokemon Nuzlocke is, it's basically implementing like your own like rules to follow as you play through the game. Because there's not a hard mode of this game. You can't just go into settings and change it. So people have come up with their own personal ways to make the game harder. Which I think is hysterical. And a very popular way of that is the Nuzlocke. Which um, you can only hold six Pokemon. And you have... Uh, you can only catch a new Pokemon for every area, uh, every new area or town you visit. Like, you have to catch the first thing you kind of encounter. Uh, and if a Pokemon dies in battle or while you're roaming around, then that Pokemon is dead. You have to, you can't, you can't revive them or heal them uh, back. It's, they're gone. So I, I'm curious if people have modified the rules now that uh, the last, these last two Pokemon games have been open world. So you can actually see what you're kind of about to run into versus all the other previous Pokemon games where... <laughs> You're walking through the tall grass, and Sparrow comes out of nowhere. And now you're just stuck with adding Sparrow on your team. So, it's definitely a type of a challenge. I'm still interested to maybe try someday. Even though the last thing I needed was Pokemon to get any more difficult because I already think it's fair enough and long-winded. But, what, they only drop a new game every... Two, three years? No, maybe longer than that. Huh, I'm curious. I really don't know. Because, what, they add, like, 150... Add roughly another 100, 150 Pokemon every game. So, uh, let's see, 150, 300, so it's, I think they just finally like crossed the thousand. So there's only what? Oh wait, no, yeah, we're on like generation eight. So what's that, eight games in 25, ooh, 25 plus years? Maybe 30 years. Wow, why is Pokemon so popular? <laughs> They're just well paced and I guess fun? Interesting. I'm, I'm gonna have to look into that. I'm, I'm curious 
to what I'm not thinking about and what I'm missing. But yeah, uh, what, bro? I, <laughs> there's a lot about Pokemon I don't know. <laughs> I love Pokemon, don't get me wrong. I, <laughs> I was at the perfect age when um, the original series started, which what, it's called Indigo for some reason. Pokemon Indigo. Yeah, it was just perfect. <laughs> I was young <laughs> and the Pokemon were fun and interesting and adorable. <laughs> And yeah, so I'm definitely, uh, a lot of my fandom sprouts from the original 150, but I'm not like a 150 purist. I don't think the game got tremendously worse as it kept going. It's like, you know what, it's fine. <laughs> I still love it. Do I know all the other generations? Eh, not really, but... I'm always excited and, and pleased when I do meet other fans of the game or the franchise, and especially if they know more than me. Is there a point of jumping off? Yeah? You want a Pokeball? You're hoping to get around? Okay, sure. Yes. Dicking around, aren't we? Do we have a goal? Do we have a destination? I feel like we've kind of putzed around today. <laughs> uh, anyways, I don't remember what I was talking about. But uh, yes, Pokemon, fun, delightful. This is still early 2024. Anything eventful happen? The Grammys was just over the weekend. So, yay? <laughs> I didn't watch him. I really wanted to, and I missed it. I know people got awards. I know Paramore got like two different Grammys. Taylor Swift got one. Uh, Billie Eilish got two. Yeah, I believe two. Those are the only ones I could think. Oh, Miley Cyrus supposedly got her first. Which kind of sounds weird to think about and say, because I feel like she's definitely been in the industry for quite a while. And, like, to me, Miley Cyrus was almost, like, at the forefront of what, like, a new wave of pop music became. Um, so it's weird to think that she's never won a Grammy yet. I mean, sure, maybe she wasn't going to win for a party in the USA, but, uh, um, like, The Climb was a really big song. I believe she won last night for her song, uh, The Flowers. Is it just called Flowers? I Can Buy Myself Flowers? Is that the name of the song? I think the song's called Flowers. Anyways, it's, I mean, good for her. Sure. I've never really got into her music. My sister had the first Hannah Montana CD. So, if that counts for anything. She's always just kind of been there. And, and I remember a few times trying to sit down and listen to a, full, to a full album. And just not really feeling it. And yes, you heard me right. Uh, I listened to full albums. I still listen to full albums. From start to finish in their entirety. I do, like, let uh, random like music recommendations kind of come through uh, as I'm sitting at work listening to things. I've actually found some fun in different bands that way, but <sighs> I still like to sit down and just listen to an album in its, in, in its entirety to really, you know, get into a vibe and get into a new artist or a new band it's just one of those things i i haven't let go of from the old ways um but i don't hate on people who can't listen to a full album unless you're like a hater of someone's music and all you know are the hits like the like two three singles that they're known for if if that's all it's going to take for you to hate on a musician, then you go 
fuck off. <laughs> At least like give them their whole A and B tracks because a lot of times my favorite songs from any given artist are the ones you didn't hear. And those might be the ones you like too. I'm actually really curious with uh, our audience here on the channel. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment, especially if you got this part in the video. Please leave a comment about um, what was the last full album you listened to? And not like, what was the last full album you revisited because uh, you already knew you liked it? What's, what's the like newest thing that came out that you sat and listened to the whole album? Because like, I'm a big Green Day fan, so Green Day just put out a new album, Saviors. And of course, I sat down and listened through that whole album and it's great. Um, apart from Green Day, what's a weird one that I've sat down and listened to everything of? Who was I listening to t today? I was listening to someone earlier today and, oh gosh, who was it? It's gonna bug me. Oh, today actually, um, someone else I listened to today. Um, the full album, the album I believe is called Grown Up by the Linda Lindas a very new um, all-girl band like punk pop kind of band and um, that was actually I had a lot of fun I listened to that album twice in its entirety just today once in the morning and then again after I've like woken up more uh, in the afternoon and um, no yeah there's, there's definitely some weird songs. There's a whole song um, uh, about their cat, which I thought was delightful. There's, I think the last song was like F racist white kids or something. Uh, or, I oh know it, it, it was fuck sexist boys. It was something silly like that. Uh, and that was definitely not something I was expecting to hear. Uh, screamed into my ears that early in the morning, but it was uh, delightful. Uh, so yeah, Grown Up by the Linda Lindas. Uh, I'll throw that one out there to you guys. Ah, he got away. How am I supposed to return this to him now? Oh, hey, you're here as a gym challenger, right? Yep. I knew it. Of course you are. That big man just left, that just left is Kofu, leader of the Cascarafa gym. He has a bit of a childlike side to him, and today he's run off to the market without his wallet. He'll be in big trouble without it. That's where you come in, kind gym challenger. Can you please take Kofu's wallet to him? If I must. Oh, you're too kind. I'd give you a gym badge right now if I could. What's stopping you? Here's his wallet. I'm counting on you. You attained Kofu's wallet. You put Kofu's wallet in your bag. Kofu's wallet. This can be your gym test here, if you do this for me, pal. Kofu's headed to Porto Marinida. Be careful, though. There are huge tracts of land out there. And now that we've finally found our location, we get to leave. Welcome to Seguro or something. I just rewatched for the second time uh, Rock of Ages uh, with my father. And I remember hating the movie. And I still don't care for it. But, uh, it's, it's cringy in, like, the best of ways. <laughs> if anything, it's going to be, like, a movie to kind of, like, get really drunk or high to and just hate watch. Because, uh, it, yeah, it's not great. It, it's really not great. But uh, if you're a big uh, 70s and 80s, like, rock music band, you're going to have fun with it. Tom Cruise is being a very interesting version of himself, I think. And Alec Baldwin, um, who definitely cannot sing, has a few too many bits where he's forced to sing. 
And um, you know what? I'll let you guys just discover and have the most fun with it. Apart from that, do I have a good movie? Like a good recommendation? Not really. What else has come out? American Fiction was good. I like the writing, I like the acting. Something about the production seemed off. I don't know. Anyways, that's my time.